What's up everyone, Tiki here. Before we get into the show, I need to ask you guys for a quick favor. Please take a minute to give us a review on any platform you listen to the show on, especially iTunes. Please guys, it really goes a long way and it helps to keep the lights on. Seriously guys, thank you for that. Uh, I, I can't say it any other way. It's a massive, massive uh, help for the show. Um, all right, that's it. Let's get into the show. What up, what up, everyone? Welcome to PFC 225. Been a while since we did a remote session with the boys. You can catch this episode on YouTube. Um, let's go around and introduce ourselves with new listeners. We're getting new listeners all the time. I'm Tiki. I'm Tom. <laughs> One of you. What's up, world? This is L. How you doing? Hey, I'm Haas. <laughs> hey, last but not least, there he is. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. <clears throat> Midweek games are always a nightmare. It's tough to watch. A lot of you guys have jobs um, working at the time. You're trying to, you know, shrink your screen so you can have the game playing while you're working on spreadsheets and yada, yada, all that good stuff. Um, so we're here for you guys to discuss sort of the more, you know, notable stories of the games, not necessarily exactly what happened. Obviously, we'll get into that as well, but there's more covering of the major items in the games this week so let's open it up with the uh, defending champions chelsea playing at stamford bridge in front of their home crowd it used to be a fortress fortress no more go down three nothing to bournemouth smack blanked at home boys what are your thoughts on this for me it's it's crazy how up and down chelsea have been in the last four years you have Mourinho winning the league then at one point they were almost fighting for relegation. I know it was early on, but they finished what tenth place. Then they come right back to win the league again. And then true that they're they've been bouncing in and out of the top four, but they they just can't be consistent enough to just always be in the top two or three. And again, when it comes down to Chelsea, if they just left the roster alone rather than just selling certain players or loaning certain players out, they would be in a better situation because they had enough money to bring people in and keep hold of some of the other players. Well, that would require them to have a different philosophy, Hus. Just a completely different philosophy. They're a mercenary team. They bring players in to win titles every single year. And when you do that, there's no guarantee in chemistry. When you keep rotating coaches, philosophy changes every two to three years. And like you said, they'll win one year, next year, out of the Champions League, win again the next year, next year, fighting for top four. So as long as you have a philosophy like that where you don't try to bleed in your youth into the first team and you're just buying first team stars, you're going to have guys like Zappa Costa, you're going to have guys like Emerson, who's a new signing for them from Roma. You have to merge and try to make, make guys like that work. I, I think that's definitely a factor, Tom, but I think the bigger factor is Conte, man. He's just, it's almost self-capitulation at this point. You know, He said he's want to go back to Italy, he wants to go home. He said that back in the fall. But I've criticized him, not that I know anything, but he's fielded eight defensive players against Bournemouth. You know, the only attacking players he had with Barkley, new boy, uh, uh, Pedro, new boy Barkley, and Hazard as the number nine, um, having just sold Bashwai. But three attacking options against Bournemouth at home. You go with That's eight so defenders, including, inc- including Courtois, you know, seven, seven defensive players on the field, outfield players. What are you doing? You know, this guy wants to lose. He wants to get fired. But this goes even further than um, just fielding those players. This also go- gets down to him having uh, a problem with Diego Costa and now ha- him having a problem with uh, David Luiz. David Luiz, uh, because um, Bournemouth, they came out that they said that they know that Chelsea had weaknesses. And there's rumors that Gary Cahill was the, the problem or is the weak link or Bournemouth thinks so. And they went after him. And guess what? It worked. Now, if Dav- David Luiz and then instead of him, Yes, he is one of those players that is high risk, high reward. But does that high reward, you know, is, is there more pros and cons with David Luiz than Gary Cahill? 
Are, are we talking high highs and low lows? <laughs> what are we at us? Tell me. My thing is you're at home. You should be aggressive. <laughs> you definitely should be aggressive at home. You're at the bridge, man. Stanford Bridge, like you said, was known for being a fortress, not allowing any goals, retaining clean sheets and getting W's there. All of a sudden, you know, their, their, their philosophy is just so negative, man. Like, I don't see Antonio Conte making it to the end of the season. Um, maybe Damn. I'm jump, jumping the gun early on this, but the way it's all sort of devolving, it's, 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 no, it's no bueno, man. It's no bueno. Yeah, man, you can, you can see it like Al was saying. He was talking about uh, him dreaming of uh, going to manage in Italy again and how it's tough to settle in England. Um, he's complained about not having his players. He didn't want Morata. He wanted Lukaku. Couldn't get Lukaku. Um, it's essentially this is a problem with his team, man. I don't know why he's not the one on the sidelines coaching this team because he's like uh, Jerry Jones for the Cowboys. He doesn't let the managers do a thing. They kind of get lucky. Jerry when Jones. Win. He really is. They kind of get lucky when they win. And, and I don't want to take it away and just throw it all on luck. But what I mean by luck is they hit that spark of chemistry that you can uh, that you can put together for a year. But after that, it falls apart. Similar to like a Leicester being able to put it together for one season. Chelsea's becoming that yo-yo team, except their budget is bigger. So instead of finishing mid-table, they'll finish maybe top four, top six. Whereas a Leicester would finish lower. So, Tom, I'm with you, man. I don't, I don't think you're jumping the gun. I think this guy is on his way out. And I think Bakayako as well, man. He's, he's not a flop. He's having those first-year blues where he's not bringing that dynamicism that we saw in Monaco. Now, could that be that League One is weak? Yeah, possibly. It's also first-year EPL blues. But he's really not as dynamic. His touch is raw at times. I don't know if it's nerves or what, but missing chess Fabregas through injury for so long has really hurt this team. Uh, yeah, when, he, when, he, just, comes, he just came. Go ahead. When it comes down to big time managers at big time clubs, there's a few words uh, that come to mind, but when it comes down to it, consistency, as we said, trophies, I mean, but when it comes down to it, it's the talent that they bring in. Because three, four years ago, or let's say four or five years ago, Chelsea, they're doing well. They're actually even two years ago, when they had all these star-studded players, Olivier Giroud coming to Chelsea? No, Bro, that's what they're looking don't, for. Don't no, sleep on Giroud, man. I, that's, I, that's I'm not sleeping, but that you're telling me that when they had Drogba and, and those guys, you're telling me that Olivier Giroud should be on that type of team? When, they, they're, when they're out there winning the Premier League, this guy should not be on this team. Yeah, he's Look, a French international, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Giroud. Go ahead, Al. Hold on, dude. Hussey. Let's go by the numbers. Let's go by stats. All right. Your favorite game to play. All right. You ready for this? <laughs> all right. Since he joined Arsenal in 2012, you know, he, first season, 11 goals. Second season, 16. Then 14. 16 again, 12. This year he's got four. The guy barely this is plays. All from the he bench. puts up numbers. You know, from the yeah, bench, man. you know, garbage time, um, you know, not, not really getting chances, but still scoring. This guy scores over 10 goals a season. And he never, never plays. So for, for Chelsea and, uh, to sign, but at the same they time, needed number you nine. have a short memory. You have a short and memory. Us, by the way, when he was coming off the bench, yes, he was doing well. And that's what he'll hopefully be doing for Chelsea. But when he was starting for Arsenal, how many Arsenal fans were telling him to get out, leave Arsenal. London? Because they I, didn't like the way he was playing. Exactly. Because he's not a starter. Not, no, no, no. No, he is a starter, just not an Arsenal because they play like a Liverpool fast-paced soccer. I think this guy was missing a club. He's lucky to find Chelsea in this weak spot where Morata has got question marks around him. They got rid of Bashwai. This guy is going to be the starter, and he's going to get a chance to prove over a long period of time, you know, the next four months or so, to prove who, if he's about this life, as Tom would say. I think this is a perfect move for him. I think he's been underrated at Arsenal because, one, because of the way they play, that quick touch moving around. It doesn't suit him. He needs the kind of team that's going to lob it up to him. He's got the second best chest trap in the world outside of Fellaini. Um, <laughs> but the dude holds it up so well. Now, what he's not really good at are those layoff passes. Once he has possession... No, he yeah, he look. is, dude. Yo, he's, he lives to the flicks. Look, look. That's, look, that's he, one of his strengths, man, is, is look, the flicks. He's improved. No, he's improved, man. He's improved, but it's not where it should be for a guy who controls Bro, well, Trust me, that's one of Giroud's strong spots. I've been watching this guy for a long time. You know, I've been hating on him for a long time. I'm glad he's gone from Arsenal. I just don't like him going to a rival in Chelsea. But yep. Chelsea need him. Uh, but beyond Chelsea, man, we're talking a lot about Chelsea. We gotta we gotta give props to the Cherries, right. man, who came You're in right. and thrashed them three 0 Callum Wilson, goal and an assist. 
these guys are doing work, man. And, you know, Eddie Howe's got these boys playing a little bit better now. And uh, we'll see where they go. Um, I was glad to see Nathan Ake, the score against Chelsea. It's what you get, Chelsea, for selling a quality player like that. I love it, man. Chelsea and he did celebrate. Him. And he yeah, celebrated. No, he, he should celebrate, man. They, 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 they loan you out. They have you. They loan you out. Then they bring you back just to not play you. And then they sell you eventually. So I'm glad he's on Bournemouth. And Bournemouth, man, Eddie Howe's got him in 10th place. You know, they're yeah, mid-table right now. So, you know, they're punching well above their weight for where they're at. Yeah, I got no beef with them celebrating. You know me, I'm a little sensitive about celebrations. But when a c- club treats you like crap, dude, do the Adabayor, <laughs> run half the field and go celebrate in front of those fans. Um, let's move on to the next game. I don't really want to talk much about this one, but it's <laughs> all good. I'll take my licks. Uh, Al and I will take our licks. Tottenham 2, Man United 0 in a game that should have probably been like 5 or 6, maybe 5 or 6, 1. You guys play like crap. Awful. <laughs> Man United was <laughs> terrible this game. And you could tell right away because Spurs scored 10 seconds into the game. It was just high school defending. And, and really, it was just a direct long ball from Vertonghen. Now, there's been controversy about this goal because Harry Kane um, initially got a head V-A-R. start. V-A-R. When, when the whistle V-A-R. was blown, um, the players had not quite kicked the ball to move it forward. And um, oh, no, Harry Kane to move it, was, it, to move it to backwards move again. Yeah, to Harry Kane it. was already. Um, sorry, I'm living in the 80s. Harry Kane was already um, in the opponent's half. So I don't care about all that's that meaningless. stuff. I think that's semantics. Look, it's 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 extremely semantics. Uh, but those are the kind of things VAR is going to catch. It doesn't excuse that Spurs won the ball twice, and uh, Erickson was allowed to shoot the ball basically from inside the six. There's no Who, excuse. That's whose fault was it? Uh, whose fault? Who's, who's I would fault say was Matic, Matic for not tracking Ericsson. But you Thank can you. say Phil that's Jones. How, that's how I know you. Uh, but you can, for sure. you can say Phil Jones for not winning that ball and then the second ball as well, not being cleaned out, not being awake. They were saying that this is a tactic that Spurs uses. Mourinho came in the, uh, after, in the, uh, the press conference after the game and said it was a shocking goal. It's a goal we prepared for. We know Spurs does this all the time. Uh, we, we worked on it. We trained on it. So it's Jones being switched off, Matic being switched off. It's, it's amateur stuff, like you're saying, Thomas, high school. You know, and, and that goal aside, man, United were never really in this game. Um, you know, couldn't, couldn't make 10 passes in a row if they tried. I, I wouldn't I say this. That, sorry, well, man. I wouldn't say this. Right after that first goal, United looked dangerous. Lukaku and uh, Ling- Lingard had a couple of chances, but that was for like five minutes and then – the uh, Spurs own the rest of the game. I, I agree with you, Tiki, because if that if that ball doesn't flick off Lingard's heel and he can finish that, it's a one one game, two and a half minutes in, it's a different game right there. Yeah. If. Go ahead, Al. Well, yeah, it was just that yeah, no, that early goal man going behind early, then we played right into Spurs' hand. You know, yep. you had no hope against the Spurs side, you know, Wembley Voodoo, Wem- Wembley Hoodoo, no, non existent. Um, but but United and Josie, man, just get the tactics wrong. I get that Sanchez is a new signing man, but um no, you're yep. playing, but but the Pogba and Matic pairing has to stop. And you know what it is, it ha- the deep line. It has to stop. They they have to get get under Herrera, and then in the summer they have to get. I, I saw a rumor, but I see this rumor every transfer window. Uh, Vidal at Bayern uh, coming to to United. Um, that's the kind of guy you need behind Pogba, man. When he was doing work, it was Vidal and Perlo. Obviously, Perlo doesn't have legs, but he plays a deeper position so he can cover. And Vidal was just a workhorse. Now, if you have Matic, the workhorse, Vidal, who scores goals, you know, he's a defensive mid with goals in him. You can push him up, maybe play him a little bit like Fernandinho is currently playing at Man City. Then you get that Pogba freedom. But having Lingard, Pogba, and uh, Matic, I think he was trying to keep the continuation going. And that's what screwed us. Usually Mourinho in these big games, he locks the door. And, you know, that game showed why he does it. If he puts Anda, um, Matic, and Pogba and tells Anda and Matic to sit, then that game's different. Obviously, Lingard would have to be out of the squad. So it was tough because Lingard was hot. He didn't want to mess with him. But Lingard yeah, and Pogs. This was Dude, the best lineup he could have put out there, guys. Like, if no, you no, look no. at it, it you, was, have an it was, on-form, you have an on-form Lingard. Um, you know, Pogba, Matic holding it down. Lukaku, new signing Alexis Sanchez. Martial on the right. You know, and it's, so like, it, wasn't, you, you, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the right formation for the team no, they were playing. Exactly. Spurs plays with two number tens. 
in Ali and uh, Erickson. And oftentimes they'll play on the same side to overload a side. That's how they get so much Yoga Bonito freedom going. So to counter Spurs, you need two D mids to basically account for Ali and Erickson who have free roles all over the pitch. That was the mistake. I hear what you're saying. But, but, but That's here's what I'm the thing, saying. Though. He struggled because nah. he was playing the hot hand, of course, but you're playing away from home. You're playing a Spurs team who plays a certain way. That's He, he got it wrong, in my opinion, I, but I don't blame him either because he I wasn't. I think your, your midfield just let you down. Like, no, yeah, I don't no, think... No, they, like, no, Papa and Matic were nowhere near tight enough. Like, I see what you're saying with Ander Herrera, but, you know, I, I, I wouldn't you know why Matic wasn't tight? selection. You know why Matic wasn't tight? Because it was two or three V1 every time. So Absolutely, Matic, man. I don't even blame Matic, dude. I blame Pogba and Lingard. And instead of Lingard, a number yes. 10 who plays even further than Pogba, you put Ander. Then you have two number sixes playing with Pogba playing number eight. We don't play with a number 10. Alexis Sanchez can come off the wing and fill that 10 spot. Then the, the lineup is better for, for matching up with Tottenham. But again, I'm saying... Hindsight's easier. He was playing the hot hand, so I don't fault him too much. Lingard was coming in hot, scoring all kinds of bangers. He just tried to keep continuation going, pulled off Mata for Lexi Sanchez, which I don't blame him for. He just got it wrong, but it, it it's, doesn't make him you know crazy or bad manager. I'll tell you, you, know, tell you what I don't, it went I don't, wrong. I don't, blame, I don't blame Jose too much, man. Like it, The squad, the team he put out was fine. You know, I, I, It comes down to Paul Pogba, man. If you play him in his, his, his preferred position like against Everton, he'll have a ball in game. But you ask him to do a simple job, yeah, you know, stay in yep. front of the defense, do be disciplined, you know, stay tight to Montage, do your job, don't go doing flicks, don't go high up the field, man. Just don't be, dribble. Be conservative. Don't, don't, yeah, be conservative, don't dribble. And his discipline is shocking. It's absolutely okay. shocking, man. I, I know it's I not know. a position, but dude, so you got to do the job. You got to give up your pride and put it in for 90 away from home. So is you he know, playing him out of position then? Because no, essentially, no. you've what you've just said there is just. Pogba, don't use your best qualities. I think it's out of role, not position, because he is he was playing center mid, but his role is usually more attacking center mid. You know, he's on the other side of number eight versus a yeah. Lampard who would do the defensive work and arrive late. You know, they're both number eights. Um, but I think, like Al is saying, because he has to do so much defensive work, by the time he wins the ball, he's in his half. Usually he prefers to receive it at half, hold someone off turn, and then lay in Morata or Iguain or whoever he has. He wasn't able to do that because when we did win it, he was, you know, well in our final third, and he's trying to turn people and hold on to the ball, and obviously Spurs is a high-press team. Yeah, you know, Tiki, I, I agree with you with the Ander Herrera. Put him in there. He, every he time that he's played, dog, no, right? what, what I'm saying is when he plays, he produces. Yes, he had a couple of bad matches this year, but at the same time, you gotta, you have to have faith in him. You really do because if he's in there with Matic, Pogba, just stay up the field, just That's do your it. thing. And the thing is, you say, oh, he's not disciplined. He's a 24 year old who loves doing these these moves, these flicks. You're taking away yeah. his heart. You're taking yeah. away the soul of of this player. Let that type of player run wild. Like, no, dude, one game, one game, man. He, I mean, he plays he plays higher up when he can. But in this game, you know, I, I say I think you should go with under in the midfield also with Matic. But in this game, he didn't. But yeah, dude, one, Al, dude, for, right. don't, for this don't one game, for, dude, for, dude, no, that's dude, how it starts. It's, like, it's, awesome. like, it's like going to work. It's like going to work in the office. And be like, hey, I got you. You have to file these papers today. I know you're an accountant or I know you're whatever, but you got to do this today. You just got to do your job for that one day, man. I 100% agree with you, man. It's not asking for a lot. A guy who paying not. 200K, one game, suck it up, do the defensive work. It's not asking a lot. It was I don't care you don't want to do it, man. And how many times have we seen Jose pull him out to the side, not just this game, but multiple games, because he's like he's confused. It's like, where am I supposed to be, coach? That's well, because that's the type know? of play he is. I've never heard of Babe Ruth trying to bunt. But the dude, thing don't, is, be, don't be doing <laughs> <the thing> cross-reference <laughs> sports from 100 years ago. Dude. That's, that's, a, that's an exceptional one. <laughs> Holy hell. Right. That was crazy. <laughs> But the thing is with Paul Pogba, yes, he's confused because that's not – that isn't his role. Don't make him be something that he is not. Dude, it's don't, not don't like I, think I think we're discovering – guys, I think we're discovering that Pogba is a much better attacking player than he is defensive. I think we always knew that he was a better attacking player. I just think that we believe that the defensive side of the game was a little bit closer. I think we're now seeing that Pogba Agreed. is a number 10, no, not a no, number 8. I, I agree with you to a point, but I, I don't, I'm not going to say he's a bad defensive player because if you put him in that middle role, 
he can clog up a lot of space because he's so athletic. Defensively, he's good. But being a, a, um, in the center there, I, I think he loses track because he's so – he wants the goal. He wants to go forward so Undisciplined. Yes, un- to a point, undisciplined to defensively because he just wants that goal. That much because Dude, you know that's what? That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, don't want to go? Uh, no, that's that's the that's the coach's fault for make put him in that situation. Don't look, don't make him defensive first. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it develops during the season. I think he just has to pick his spots. Certain games he's gonna have to sit. Certain games he's gonna have to attack. But let's talk about. I mean, okay. biggest mistake Mourinho made was um, starting Phil Jones. Why would you do it? <laughs> well, Why shut would up, you do Tom. it? This, guy, this guy's a bum. The guy's been uh, starting all year for United when he's been healthy. Um, United weird has, had, has, has had <laughs> weird seven neck. clean sheets since December 26, 2017. How um, many? Yeah, we're in this year. Happened. We're in we're in 2018, bro. Uh, we, How, we haven't given up any all year this? except Tottenham. Uh, except, except the own goal. Because Phil Jones is a fraud out here. Mm. Not a true Man United starter. It's a rotational player. Yes, you got to get Eric Bailly back, who's injured. Hey, serious, though? But next to Eric right Bailly, now? you need a better guy than Phil Jones and Dude, a better guy than Chris Smalling. Dumb. Just because it looks ugly doesn't mean it's not effective, man. This guy's been, every time he's on, a win percentage. He's like Carrick. People say Carrick, upgrade, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, this year's a different story. But historically, when he's in, we win because he does that thankless job. Now, am I sitting here saying... Sergio Ramos and Phil Jones should be rubbing shoulders. No, dude. Like, Phil Jones is what he is. I have no problem with Phil Jones starting. I got no beef All with I'm it. saying he's is been, he's, he's been dying. He's not a starter. He's not I, a starter, bro. I think he's a You guys want to take it? He's better than Kashan. I've watched him out. tell you that, man. I've watched him out. Better than Kashan. Um, he's not. He's not. With, especially with the recent dip in form from Kashan Lee, they're about <laughs> even. But when they're both at the peak even? of the games, oh, we all know Kashan Lee's <laughs> We all know because Shanley's better. Fair enough. What I will I say, though, is you guys just, leave it. just raise the standards. You guys are used to being bad right now because you've lost Fergie. We used to have this We're not used illustrious to being bad. Air about three, these guys. We've nah, had the won't. best defense for the last three seasons, except one of the seasons when Tottenham won. We've had the best defense. Because of your goalie. If you did not have David De Gea and making Dude. special saves, you would be exposed. Dude, it's it's you not be. He's bailing these guys out. I'm not saying Phil Jones is, is bad. What I'm saying is he's a fraud because he's not a Man United starter. Fraud? Son. Now he's a fraud. Yeah, he's not a Man United crazy. starter. Not let's even talk suspect. About straight, straight to fraud. That's my let's hot take, suspect. son. That's my hot take. Let's, let's talk no, about I, I, I like Phil Jones. I do. Yo, let's keep it moving. Let's keep All it moving. Right. Let's talk about Phil Jones. Uh, oh, yeah, you want to too. Suspect guy. The other suspect guy, Lukaku, struggling against top six again. Ooh, Lukaku. I mean, Tiki and I, we brought it up. Sometimes he just disappears. He's like a ghost. Oof, where'd he go? He just... Where'd he go? Where's Lukaku? You never he know. Had where no, he, he, had, he had no support, man. He had no support. I think Marshall was the biggest disappearing act of the, of the day. You know, even his work rate in the dying moments was nowhere to be found. Put Rashford. You should have had Rashford start this game and have him run his socks off. Now, what do you think about Marcel's body language? Was that just like typical? That's Marcel's face, or did you yeah. see something extra no. this game? Dude, he played that's nine kind of, minutes. Kind of- uh, he played out of position for the first half an hour. They put him into his left mid. I think that's just. Uh, Martial's face. <laughs> Classic. He's got the bitch Classic face, man. The, the, face. the resting bitch face, man. It's just the way he rolls. <laughs> I don't know if I call that bitch I'm, face. I've never seen a guy with that. He's got the he's got he's got the dead fish eyes. Yeah, he you know, looks like he's, he's just expressionless. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> permanently fried. Dude, a guy who is you know really suffering right now, catching a lot of heat, media speculation, played a full seven minutes. Uh, for Lady, <laughs> getting Damn. subbed on hard subbed seven on. minutes. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this guy? Well, dude, first of all, wrong substitution. We're down two goals. You bring on Fellaini uh, right away. I know Pogba was having a holler, but dude, you're bringing on Fellaini. Like I, we, now, when, and when, with that move, man, I was in my mind. I was like, "What are we going to lump the ball forward again? Is that what yep. we're going to revert to, Jose? You know, when I, we get under on the bench, high school you know, football. And unfortunately, high school football, dude. But uh, apparently, I've heard it was his groin. I've heard it was his knee again. Uh, as far as injuries for, for Fellaini, that's why he came off after seven minutes. And he looked distraught. He looked pissed off right down the tunnel. And uh, I, I feel for him, man, because I've come to like the guy. And I liked him on Everton, but I, as a United guy, I've come to appreciate from him for who he is. And it's all yeah, we man. need, but I, I appreciate he's gonna who be, he is. Sorry, they're saying he's going to be out for a couple of months. 
Ugh. So this is a pretty big setback for a Mourinho guy. Yeah, look, I hope it's real. It's in Mourinho's wheelhouse, wheelhouse to, uh, to bullshit about this kind of stuff. Um, I only find it a little bit suspicious because as soon as um, who took that shot? I think Kane took that shot like point blank and De Gea saved it with his chest. Or was it Ericsson? Maybe even Ali. Yeah. I don't know. There was right after I, think it was, that, I think it was Phil Jones when he roofed it top right for his own goal. All right, cool. That was yep. very helpful. Um, Mourinho waved, you know, aggressively to Anda, who was warming up, and Rashford already had his shorts off. So I think it might be a combination of both, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if 80% of the reason was because Laney wasn't doing the job he was expected to do. <clears throat> Rough man, yeah, but- Spurs. But props to Spurs, man. We already said it before, man. Dominant in the second half. You know, you could could barely get the ball over the half line. Um, Davis and Sanchez proven, you know, him back in the squad really makes a big difference for this team. Guys, class. You know, Eric Dyer, your boy Tiki, holding it down the middle. (laughs) Even he looked nice, man. (laughs) Yeah, Dembele. I was most impressed with Dembele. Yeah. Yeah, man. I saw him get a card early, and I was like, yes, perfect. We're gonna we're gonna run at him, and nope, not an incident after that. Mm-hmm. But look, no, I mean, come on. What do you mean? Okay, no, I, I thought he was going to go. Um, so United, they're going to need somebody because, honestly, for if you look at the next month and a half, if Fellaini's um, injured, I know they got Sanchez, but at the same time, they're facing Huddersfield, which is going to be tough. Newcastle, that would probably be pretty easy. But then you got Sevilla, Chelsea, Crystal Palace will always be tough. Then you got Liverpool, then Sevilla again. So you have some really hard matchups between the end of uh, February and Dude, what early are you March. talking about? Huddersfield and Crystal Palace are Huddersf- tough? Huddersfield? <laughs> I know Palace. it's not. Dude, it's hey, look, Liverpool. All look. right, Swansea. All right, relax. <laughs> I, know we, I know we lost to Huddersfield early in the season. I know you're going to bring that up. I know we lost to them. So how am I ridiculous for saying that? It's not a tough game. You know, it it's, a, it's a game we should win. Should yeah, every I game in the game. EPL is oh, tough. Game Al has the should game. No, but look, Huddersfield dude, for, comes for in. For a team that's only lost four, four. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say Huddersfield has lost four in a row. It's looking bleak. They're showing that you know that they don't have the legs for a full Premier League push yet. Now they're on the slide. Just like yeah, just like every team, it could be a bogey. But if you're a betting man, house Man United win on Saturday or lose. Like that's all we're looking at it as. We're not sitting here saying going to be easy. There are no easy games in the EPL. We know. We get it. But when Swansea it's, beats Arsenal, that's an upset, right? Because we knew it should have been an easy game an for upset. Arsenal. But, but it's still, you know, one of those games because Huddersfield has already had success against United that you kind of have to rule. It's even, it's even tougher more. for Huddersfield, Hus, because Man exactly. United lost. I so now that. they're like and, a and bounce Man back United game. is not going to under, under, um, underestimate them. Nah, isn't going to under Herrera? <laughs> Uh, they're not going to under Herrera them because they already lost to them once. It's and like he doesn't play. Came back. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Where it's just one more person off the bench that Jose might need because how many times again? McTominay. They go down. You no, know, what I'm saying is they go down and then you put Fellaini on and they just hit it forward. I mean, that's how they got some points against Liverpool this year and last year, or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. how that's how Arsenal got points against United by hoofing it to Giroud. Something you play your best weapon, man. If you think it's hoofing it. How are you too proud to get three points? No one's too proud for that. Is it pretty? No. Is it what I'm I grew not, up watching? Hell no. But what I'm that's saying what is, if trying. what I'm saying is, if he's injured, I mean that kind of, I mean that he's Plan B for United. If he's injured, we're gonna who's Plan C? We're gonna go to Plan C, man. Figure it out. I don't know. All right, all right. Enough United. And then with and Spurs, I mean they got a case of the Liverpools where we started with Real Madrid. They did Real Madrid, and then they went away, and then. Spurs against um, United. Are they going to be the same Spurs next week or this weekend? You don't know. I think they might be because they're playing Liverpool. That's it. If they were playing Swansea, I'd be like, you never know. But I don't think they'll be too busy celebrating the United win knowing they, they have an Anfield game coming. Let's Spurs go to this team. Better... Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, no. Go ahead, Tom. Let's wrap Spurs it up. Spurs just better hope Harry Kane stays healthy. If That's Harry it. Kane goes down injured, they are done. Agreed. They're out. They're, they're, they're going to finish sixth. Man City cruising. I mean, there's not much to say about these blue fuckers. Uh, they beat West Brom 3 nothing, And what looked like was going to be a bit of a challenging game ends up being a TCB. KDB just being KDB, man. It's yeah. so freaking annoying. Ends up being a KDB. That's exactly what it was. Goal and an assist for Kevin De Bruyne. 
Oh my God, inch perfect passes every time. I mean, this guy, man, I'm telling you, he's the best midfielder in the world. Tony Cruz is really close. He's really close. But Kevin De Bruyne, with the attacking quality he has, is he just I think edges him a notch and should have had two goals. Yeah, the, the one mm-hmm. uh, he went up the right side, then he kind of shanked the shot a little bit. I mean, Kevin De Bruyne, you're putting money on him for putting that at least on net with power. Agreed. I mean, I'm not much I mean, more to say about City because it's, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of depressing. <laughs> um, I like talking about them because they're just winning so much. <laughs> they're winning so much, man. Are you guys finally gonna say that it's City's league? Dude, when have no. when have I not said that? Uh, no. I don't know. I said that back in like October. Yeah, you oh, did. Oh, and you guys went after. You, 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 you and half before. the world said you, that. You, oh, no, 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 no. Because you, you, you guys jumped all. You guys jumped all. We did. No, we did. No, we did. This is because you're never in the race. Because it's because you never have a horse in the title race, and you always say, "Oh, City's gonna win it." No, because it's not your team. If your team's in second place, man, dude, stop trying to flex. Stop trying to flex. You called it the earliest on the show. No. But none of, don't act like we called you crazy. What well, we said, we're yes, not did. jumping in that. No, we said we're not jumping in that boat with you. They didn't say you were crazy. Like I specifically remember out. saying, no, I specifically remember saying, Hus, I'm not ready to say it's City's league, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. It, I'm dude, still enough. They were up like nine points at that time, cruising, dude. Maybe even 11 in October. I, I'll admit, I didn't. You predicted it first. There's no question. No doubt about that. Hus called it way back when. No, but I'm not. But I'm not taking point. He, uh, he, he, it wasn't this brave call. They're already up, I think, comfortably like eight. He's pulling the Charlie Austin, really the old delicious. Charlie Austin. Oh, he scored a hat trick in the past two weeks. Oh, yeah. No, he's on fire now. <laughs> he oh, was on I fire last it. week. Last year, when, when they played him, he scored. Get out of here. Get out of here, Buzz. <laughs> Buzz, you did jump on it early, but oh, it was it was a pretty safe boat. You were jumping on the Don't Titanic. Worry. Don't worry. I saved you guys a, a seat on the train. <laughs> right. you drive your bus around the block. Dude, Aguero <laughs> with that classy chip uh, to make it 3 nothing. Thank God. I had him captain. Um, but, dude, that angle with the pressure, with the goalie coming out, to, to like, chip. And at that, like, this dude, unbelievable finisher, clinical. Let's not go there. <laughs> All right, that's enough about City, man. Sterling, two assists, just to shout him out. Fernandinho getting involved in the goals as well. That's that's gross, man. When you're By the way, six, about uh, Sterling, this is the first season he's been involved in 20 goals in one season. So he's having a career year. This is you it. Gotta huh? give the, you got to give the manager some props. Well, he's, he's not scoring the player. from a... Uh, from outside 12, so I don't, I'm not ready. So his to give confidence is at a six, I think, out of 10. <laughs> but the goals you're scoring are usually like sevens out of tens because they're like he's, happens. Yeah, he's good with his, head, his positioning. So. His, his positioning and his willingness to run forward and get in those positions, man. It, it's he's becoming, dare I say, clinical in the box, you know, when, when he has a chance, not maybe not first timers, but as far as his positioning is clinical, not his finishing, but his positioning is clinical. And, dude, his, his change of pace, his speed in the midfield, I can't wait to watch this guy for England at the World Cup. I, dude, want, this guy his, to li- I want this guy to light it up at the, at this summer, you know? Really his, make a name for himself. Even his decisions, man. Um, with that, that second goal uh, that KDB got, he drew the goalie out, could have taken that shot, you know, that, that pep rule of, okay, you're going to take a 70% chance or you're going to lay it off and take a 90%. And he lays it off to De Bruyne for an open net shot, man. It's... That kind of magic, that's team chemistry. You can't really teach that. Guys are playing in rhythm, understand each other, and want to make each other look good. City's unstoppable this year. Now, I'm curious to see how they do in the Champions League. Let's see if they can transfer this form. I know they'll, they'll have the ability and they'll be City, but like, can they get that luck that you sometimes need to get through to like the semis? We'll see, man. It's going to be exciting. Another team that's choking on some... Uh, Arsenal... Going down 3-1 to Swansea and what was a monsoon, dude. Um, man, EPL don't give Wait, a damn. Games go hold on, on. Hold on, hold on, hold oh, on. Everybody lots. smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Hey, <laughs> dude. Let's go. Let's go. Phil Jones, let's go. <laughs> Not oh funny, bro. God. We we got we oh, have our man. very own Phil Jones, bro. We, you have like he's a midfielder. Phil Jones. Granite <laughs> Shaka, Doug. Granite Shaka. Man, he's the Phil Jones of Arsenal, bro. I swear, son. You were raving um, last week but, about this guy. Yeah, no, was. I wasn't raving. I just said I'm glad he no, had a good we'll game. He got a goal. Okay. You know, this kind of brings me to something with it's Arsenal. Name of my, <laughs> name of my squad, we, bro. We, we saw them 
change out their whole offensive. Uh, they kept uh, Ozil, but they got rid of Sanchez. They got rid of Giroud. They got rid of Walcott. They got rid of uh, Ox. All these players. And they brought in uh, Mkhitaryan and um, Aubameyang. What, Aubameyang. Have we been saying, what, what have we been saying about Arsenal for years? It's the same thing with Liverpool. Your defense and your keeper need to be improved. And you switch out your whole offense. I mean, bruh, I did not like this game from the beginning. First 10 minutes, I could tell. Look, it rains pretty much every week in the EPL, but this was – the rain was heavier than usual. So it was away from home. Arsenal's track record away from home was pathetic this season. I believe we only have three wins away from home. So yeah, I knew it was going to be a tough game um, right, right from the get-go. Ozil, man, it's, we scored a, a goal against the run of play, man, because Swansea really was the better team for pretty much the entire game. Ozo getting himself an assist to Nacho Monreal. Um, I thought that would lift their spirits a little bit, but I mean, the the the, the shit goal to give up. Um, the one with Mustafi to Petacek. That it's those kind of things where like you can't look at the manager. You just have to look at the players, the concentration level. Mustafi, in my opinion, was a little bit too casual. Um, and Petacek, I mean, for the veteran he is to make such a rookie mistake. You can't really do much about that, man. Granite Shaka making errors as well. So this game, we lacked focus. Um, this was the game um, right before the Aubameyang transfer was made official. Um, and Mkhitaryan did, you know, get introduced into the game. So he managed to make his debut. So I think maybe mentally um, the team just was not ready, man, with the transfers th things going on and just being away from home, um, losing Alexi Sanchez and all this type of stuff. So I just think... Arsenal, we just weren't ready, man. We're not ready this game, but you have to give props to Swansea, man. They, they've, been, they've been giant killers. They, they, they destroyed Liverpool last game. Now they destroy Arsenal this game. Got to give them props. But dude, we were saying the exact opposite about Arsenal after they sold Alexi. You know, they, lost, they sold Alexi after they lose to Bournemouth 2-1 away. They smoked Palace 2-1, beat Chelsea well in the, in the League Cup 2-1. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was all post Sanchez, you know, and you guys were playing well. You guys were looking well. It was a little click in, you know, uh, slipstream passing. And I know Swansea's on the rise, man, coming off a big win against Liverpool. So they get that momentum and everything. But it's shocking. And I think, it was, I think the Peter Cech uh, gaff, you know, the holler he had on that back pass, I think that was the catalyst. That was, that was the, the nail in the coffin, man. There's no way back after that. I mean, but you also have Mohamed El Nene starting in the middle for you. So, and then also you get, um, Kolasniak on the bench. You got Maitland Niles on the on the bench, and then you have Monreal scoring. So it's almost like you have three good left backs. <clears throat> yeah, you we need, do. You, you need a couple <clears throat> center backs, and then you need someone in the middle of the pitch for you. Look, I agree, <laughs> man. But you're starting Koscielny and Mustafi, like a German international, French international. I know Koscielny's getting a little mm -hmm. bit older, but we know that. Yeah, like you said, man, Arsenal defensively were frauds. Mustafi, Midfield. Mustafi's suspect. For me this year, man. Um, that third goal where he let uh, Ayu just basically turn that corner and instead of trying to slide it for a corner, he tries to hook intercept, which then means he passes it into Klukas's path. That kind of like basic stuff, man. That's that's shocking. And that's not Mustafi's first error. I'm not going to sit here and say he sucks. I'm not taking it <clears> that far, but for the rest of the year, I'll be watching this guy close, man, because he's He's, he's creeping up comfortably on that suspect. You know what, this to be a little bit more specific, the goals Arsenal concede or have heavily mostly conceded this year, um, I would say that they've been given. So, like, yep. Yep. Ozil loses the ball in his own half, trying to dribble in a right-back sort of position. Granite Shaka, a lot of the times this season, just misplaces passes, lots of yep. loose passes, give the ball away in our own half. You know, errors like that Mustafi thing. He was trying to track back. He didn't really want to foul IU in the box, so he went for a pussy-ass little tackle. Again, gives the ball into Klukas, um, who, who, who bagged yeah. himself a brace. So a lot of the errors are given to the opponents, and that's, that's I think, a lack of focus and concentration. I agree 100%, man. Um, I, guess, I guess the Arsenal faithful, you know, the diehards are going to be coming out in swarms now after a result like this, um, having lost Sanchez. I think it really helps that you guys were serious this year about your transfer business. It's really weird. There was so much activity in January. It really happens like this, but all kinds of clubs upgrading and downgrading. But I think you'll have enough to still make that top four push. But this defense, man, they got to clean it up. 
he threw in chambers at some point, not in this game, but like during the season, he's struggling to find his feet. Uh, who's your other guy? Uh, the young kid. It's chambers. Rob Holding. Rob Holding. 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 He's struggling a bit. And I don't think these guys suck or anything. I just think it's just so hectic in that back line, the communication and, and, and a lot of things that I don't think is a good environment to learn in, you know, right now, because it's just so messy back there, man. But yeah, just a, um, a quick ahead. little odd um, story that's come up here um, is that the Premier League is investigating um, the celebrations of their players. Um, allegedly, <clears throat> um, there have been claims that the players are promoting degrading um, pornographic videos. Um, <laughs> Sam Plukas had the celebration, if you can't see it. It's that little OK, you know, sign if you're typing in the phone, it comes up with um, your three fingers up and your index finger and your thumb connected together. So this has been, I guess, one of the ones that have been deemed to be spiable on. So we'll see look how this comes what, out. What are they saying that is? Yeah, look in the butt. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess it's something to do with an asshole. Or <laughs> what, what are you talking about? What <laughs> So if you're into that, if you're into that kind of porn, um, <laughs> like that's great. <laughs> that is oh, great. Yeah. I hope that's true, man. That's freaking hilarious. Well, look, Damn actually, Plutus. you know, it's 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 um the there's a neighborhood. It's called the Simply Lovely Lay Brotherhood website. So that's the and they have that um little celebration with the finger over the eye and all that. So it's a little bit of an odd story, but just a little something quirky. Crazy. Fun fact. Thank you, Tom. Huddersfield <laughs> <laughs> <just> zero, <laughs> Liverpool three. Um, Liverpool back on the horse again. A very solid victory for them as they prepare to play Spurs. Bussington, your boys look good. Uh, you know what? When it came down to it, um, it didn't feel as comfortable before the second goal as uh, it should have. I mean, Emery Chan, he had quite the shot. I mean, it's like it. It got deflected, but at the same time, he hey, Yo, that extra hate. Hey, it got deflected, but still, he hit it. He hit, hit it low with power and found its way to the end. Uh, got back got the deflected head. and went in. That's fine. Oh, Hus, real quick, real quick, Hus. Should Emre Chan stay at Liverpool or should he go to the old lady, Juventus? Um, I mean, as a Liverpool fan, obviously, I, I think he should stay. I can, I can tell you every reason why he should go. <laughs> But I mean, I want to see him stay. That doesn't uh, sound no, like just you want to see him stay. No, 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 I, no, I truly do want to. I want to see him stay, stay because, but because with Henderson's he injuries, won. with with Henderson's injuries, Chan should be starting next year, or at least be <clears throat> starting a lot more than he has. And he's been improving so much every year uh, in Liverpool. Hustle, not, don't answer the Juventus, question as a fan. Please answer it as if you were Emery Chan. Objectively, what would you do for your career if you're Emery Chan? I would. I think I would stay for the fact that I don't know if I would start at Juventus, and I don't know if I get as much money at Juventus. And with what Liverpool and Klopp are doing right now, it's. I mean, it's looking like they'll be hopefully in Champions League next year. I know there's with Juventus, you're pretty much guaranteed Champions League, and a good shot at winning the, uh, the Serie A. But I mean, it depends on what he wants to do. Does he want to? try to make something or does he just want to hop on a bandwagon I mean, right. that's the player well done well done give us a rundown now son um yeah so during <clears> the game <throat> i mean at first i mean it's the same old same old if they get, once they get the ball past uh the midfielders yeah the, the front three can do what they do but with without coutinho in that midfield it almost seems like there's a much bigger gap now between the midfield and the and the, the wingers and Firmino. Firmino will come back. I, I don't even know what he is. He could be a false nine. I don't even know. He just kind of – at one point, I saw him playing right back, and he, he made an awesome play. But um, but that's where they really need to improve. They need that playmaker in the midfield um, because th- if they keep relying on Salah and hoping and praying that Firmino will keep up this form and then Mane will kick into gear, I mean, Liverpool's not – I don't know if Liverpool will get into Champions League if they keep up that method. Uh, yeah, one of them I, goes I, down and it's going to be tough, man. Yeah, It'll definitely yeah. be tough. I know Oxlade is doing pretty well, which Naldum, I mean, they're all they're pretty solid, but at the same time, it's the same thing that we saw last year. They need that one extra play that's that shows that little star quality, I think. Yeah, you, uh, need, just, you need that class. You know who you could potentially go for if you want to make that money purchase. And I don't know if Liverpool is still in that business of spending big transfer fees. 
Amos Rodriguez. Oh, I would I would totally be into that. That'd be that'd be great. I don't know if he wants to go to Liverpool, but I think he'd be great. Uh, the way he passes would be outstanding for uh, Salah, Mane, for me, and all those guys. And but he'd have that those long game. shot. Yeah, that long shot that Coutinho is developing. And, and you know what? That could happen next year because if Emery Chan does leave, I mean, they might try to fill that gap with him. And they do obviously have money. Uh, but getting back to the game, you got Firmino with a class goal again. Oh, my Lord. Going up that goal line, looking towards the, the center of the box. and just Was that slipping. class, though? <laughs> yeah. Or was, that, was, that, was that, you know, goalie kissing the giving fr- up his near post? That was kissing the front post near post and sending it in. That was class, dude. To look off the goalie, to get that space, and then to put it in, that was nice. That was Back one of that. those. If if you score, you get mad props. If you don't score, you're a selfish pig. Yeah, um, yeah but with Firmino no, right now, but he, he scored a lot. So I, think, give him his I think he scores. Firmino is turning into the striker that Liverpool fans really have desperately wanted. I mean, he's not, gonna, he's not going to show every, everyone that all he can do is score goals, and he may not win the goal to boot, but at the th- same time, he gets he can hold up the ball. He runs out of space and creates space for other players so well. I mean, a lot of those goals that Salah gets, it's because Firmino draws defenders away from him to go one on one v one. The the way he passes, the everything that Firmino has, he's a true true player. But I mean, it's almost like I wouldn't say he's um, a master of none. But he's a very, very good at a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's well, a master of none. I, I don't know. I, I think he. I think he's uh, a no, master how, of the stuff that we don't really necessarily look for. Huss, I think Firmino is evolving in front of our eyes, man. Um, I've always been suspicious of, of this guy at number nine, talking about Liverpool needs a nine. But as long as they can keep those wings fed and then potentially put someone behind him. I don't see a problem with Firmino leading this weird false nine. I, I don't even think you can call it a false nine anymore. It's dude. not. Cause, it's not. Because he's, he's out and out in number nine. He's scoring goals this year. Uh, he has 11 goals in 21 games, dude. Like, what more can you expect from a forward? That's a goal every other game he plays in, essentially. And you know what? Think, with God, Sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, I think we're seeing an evolution of a player we disrespected in that nine position. That might be a reason why they kicked Sturridge out, too. They were like, yo, yo this number nine position is set. He he tied with Azusa. Azusa. He's tied he with Lukaku for goals. Fifth in the league. Less appearances, too, man. Dude, but, now, but now with selling um, or with loaning out from uh, Dan- Danny Sturridge, man, if Firmino goes down, I know they got Solanke on the bench, but that's it. No, I think, I, think Sturridge was also, I think Sturridge was also kind of cutting that cancer, man. Um, and I don't blame Sturridge because he's not getting any burn. He gets bum time. Um, it's a World Cup it year, guys. It's a World Cup year. Great shot, Tom. Great Same shot. thing with Giroud. That's why we're seeing so many transfers Great this window. Shot. People wow. are desperate to make their national teams for the 2018 World Cup in Russia. What a shot, bro. That's, I mean, that's it right there. Sturridge wanted to get playing time. Boy, Joey Hart. <laughs> he's all yeah. fucked up. Quick shout out to uh, the Liverpool backline, by the way. Now you take out Van Dyke and you get a clean sheet, Hussey. What you know? What's uh, <laughs> what, what are the odds of that happening? You're seventy six million dollars, uh, million pounds. Well, I mean, down his, the drain. I mean, his first match, he scored the winner against Everton. So I mean, oh, we're talking about the high happened. points only. And and <laughs> with that, with that um, the the header that he had, that wasn't just his fault. Um, the one that he went back into the middle of the uh, the box, but he was just trying to win the ball in the corner. He just mishit it. Uh, what? Look, what header? Like what, that, where did this? What are you, what are you talking about? What header did this come? What game was this? What, wasn't that, that was Swansea when uh, he he won the header off okay. the, the court? Yeah, he went to the middle and uh, you you gotta specify that house. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you're... Last, last game. <laughs> yeah, but you, you didn't say said last that. Game. You just said yeah, but, uh, he won sorry. the la- He no. won the header. We're like you in your own uh, head. Bro. I, you're having a conversation. I, I just thought. I just. I thought we had the chemistry where I could just say whatever I want. You knew what I was talking about. We the fans probably didn't. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know, look, he's gonna. Yeah, let's wrap this one up. He's gonna turn it up. But the big thing about this game and all the other games this week, this is why it is so frustrating that Liverpool lose to Swansea one nothing, one nothing. They tie Everton one one. They tie Arsenal three three. And all those games except Swansea with Everton and Arsenal, they had those games in hand almost. They missed so many chances, and right there, just those two games would be six points. They would be second place in the league right now. 
if they just could finish off that match. Yeah, it's well, tough, yep. man. EPS and a uh, quick shout out to Huddersfield for the uh, five three two formation, they, the pyramid, the uh, the Christmas tree <laughs> they had going there. <laughs> five defenders still concede three. Poor guys. Yeah, they tried, man. But Hudders, that's what I'm saying. They're they're a bit on the ropes right now. It's tough for them. Yeah, Klopp Klop beating up his old boy. Klopp yeah, smacking did. his boy, David Wagner, around a little bit. His best buddy. Uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of buddies this weekend. Between now, and, and Jose. What's that? Beep, boop. Beep, boop, beep. What's up, everybody? How you doing? This episode of the podcast FC Show. Ooh, FC Show. Is brought to you by CLNS Media. CLNS Media is an online. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, is an online radio and digital media network which features a full seven-day week broadcast schedule with numerous personalities and celebrities from across the worlds of current events, entertainment, technology, and sports. Additionally, CLNS employs both full and part-time journalists, commentators, and producers from around the world. They utilize its staff members' geography to deliver global news in unique commentary, perspective, and all in written and spoken and visual formats. So if you're deaf or if you're blind, you know, you can listen. If you're deaf, you can, you can, you can read it. You know, they cater to all, all people. You know, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't leave anybody out. You know, they're based out of Boston, and they're a credentialed member of the media. You know, they have live on-scene reporters at events such as, you know, the Boston Red Sox, Boston Celtics, the Bruins, and the Super Bowl. Uh, electees, the New England Patriots, and also us, the Pocket FC Show. So, if you if you want to learn more about CLNS uh, Media, go online, go to Facebook, type in CLNS Media, go on your Instagram, uh, type in CLNS Media. Same for Twitter, CLNS Media slash Twitter, or take out your iPhone or Android, uh, the App Store. It's a free app. Just type in CLNS Media. Download that stuff for free, man. Start listening. Nick Gelso, much respect, brother. Love it. Uh, let's run through these games really quick. Everton, Leicester, young Theo doing work, gets himself a brace. Um, very successful Everton move so far. Assist happy for him, boot and two goals next game. Yeah, me too, man. Very yeah, happy. I'm definitely happy for him. And uh, uh, just to, we have to mention Mares absent yeah. for this game. Screwed a lot of people over fantasy wise. Love it. Um, and he's been reportedly AWOL. Um, MIA missing in action, did not report to practice after this game as well. So we'll keep you updated with that. Absolutely, man. Vardy gets himself a penalty. Um, obviously, rumors going around that um, uh, Leicester were actually prepared to play with Mares, but because of the saga, were caught with their pants down, and that's why yeah. they lost. He wants Crazy to go to Man City going. so bad. He wants to leave so bad, man. Poor guy. Uh, West Ham won. Crystal Palace won. Whoa, young Theo? Tech. What about him? I said him. Are we touched on? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> he was in a CLNS knows? media read. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I paid attention. Go ahead. Hold on. <laughs> uh, West Ham won. Palace, Palace slash Al East's team uh, won. Tie game here. Not a bad result for Crystal Palace. No, Willie oh, Zaha, Willie Zaha, quiet man. He's having a quiet time lately. He needs, needs to mm. light it up. He needs to put the team on his back again. Do what he does best. But West Ham, man, under David Moyes at home, tough to break down. You know, defensively sound, but uh, you know, a solid point for both teams. I think. You know. Yeah, I think it's a fair shot for West Ham, who you know at some point were relegation battling. Um, obviously, they want to beat teams like Crystal Palace, but. Palace, a team that's streaky and can beat anyone on any day, man. That's not – that's a fair result, I would say. And Ben, ben Teke scored. Ben, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, get on Ben Teke. My goodness, he infuriates me. Uh, we had him on Fancy Talk. I was like, oh, he only has one goal, one assist on these, in the year. He, it's in the same game. And then he goes four games with three assists and a goal. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me, dude? Like, honestly, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm, it infuriates me. I'm happy he's finding his feet, uh, finding his form again. I think he's perfect at Palace. Stay there, figure it out. Um, they're playing with Hodgson, so you know they're playing a bit more direct in that long ball type of type of system, and it works for him. Uh, he's got speedy wingers around him and Townsend and Zaha. Perfect place for Ben Tech. I hope to, he finds more success, man. Southampton won, Brighton won as well. Another tie game here. I smelt this one coming. Uh, Brighton... Streaky team, Southampton, 
team without a true number nine, really. I mean, obviously, Long is playing there. When Austin's healthy, uh, he seems to be doing the job, but he's always in and out. Are you going to hit on Gabbiadini like that, though? Because Austin's better than him. Who? Because my boy's better than your boy. Um, But the thing about Southampton, wow, 18th place. We always (laughs) – no, I'm talking about like Southampton. Wow. Yeah. That's so the, dramatic. In, in the last five years or so, we always see Southampton, you know, top 10, creeping on, you know, Europa League. And now it's like, ooh. Nice sound, sound up, effects love by it. us. Well, no. Dude, this could be, look, this could be the year. Southampton, not to get carried away, but honestly, uh, they're only five points from 10th. You know, that's two wins and they're in 10th place. It's a crazy. Tight race. The title race is over. You guys want to see drama. Watch games like Huddersfield Swansea, dude. It sounds like a garbage game, but these teams are playing for $100 million every single week because that's what you get when you stay in the Premier League because of the new TV. Actually, the new TV deal is being announced this month. So that $100 million might turn into 150 because people like us are just consuming on a different level. So the race, man, from bottom Last place, West Brom, sitting on 20 points. And you got Bournemouth in 10th on 28. That's eight points separating 10 spots, dude. This is a crazy, crazy dude, bottom half of the table. There's, there's five, there's, it's five points from 19th to 10th. It's, it's not only that. five points. You know, it's, it's 15 or 17 or 20 from first to second. But in the bottom half of the table, man, this happens every single year. Swansea's always down. You know, we got the new guys are promoted. They're doing well. Come, come Christmas, come January, man. Everything flips. All the managers get fired. The new managers come in. They revitalize these sides. I, it, dude, every year this happens. These teams get nah, switched but, but around. The, but, but the difference is this year, we don't have that Sunderland, the team we know, or Aston Villa, the team we know is out. Swansea. Dude, it was we, Swansea. We thought we did. It was. Yeah, it was, it was, we thought, it was Crystal Palace before that. Now, but that's what Swansea, I'm saying. Now it's, it's West Brom. It's crazy. So usually, usually there's one team that after December, Aston Villa, we know. Yeah. We know it's over Sunderland. Swansea. Be- was that team until they went back to back beating Arsenal? Then Liverpool, dude, they got six points. They would have been sitting on 14 points right now, way out of it, done and dusted. Oh. This is a crazy, crazy year. And they just picked up, sorry to blow the spot, Andre Ayu. Crazy. The Ayu brothers hey. back together. But let, let's talk bros. about that real quick because when we talk about managers being sacked, five, uh, you know, 10 weeks in or so, we always say the managers get the raw deal. But look at it. Everton, they change managers. They're doing better. Leicester changed managers. They're doing better. Watford mm, and West Ham, West Ham, they're doing better. Palace, they're doing better. Uh, Swansea, Swansea. Yeah, starting to do better. And then West Brom, no. So, I mean, when it comes down to – What do you mean West Brom? Yeah. yeah. West Brom got a new manager. West Brom's out of – Alan who, Party. Who, No, I know. But I'm saying of the oh. team that got the new manager, who's doing good, who's doing bad, the majority by a long shot are doing a lot better now that they switch managers. So, as much as we say it's – uh, a tough, tough deal for the managers who do get sacked. It's almost as if, I mean, it's not even almost as if the the teams made the right choice. So Liverpool should you know, switch managers. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, we'll just talk to Arsenal. We'll take uh, you know, Husty. To your point, I'm down. Man, you know, I'm down. <laughs> Hus, to your point, I agree with you. You know, we always say give managers more time. But I, I'm more willing to say that to team to managers in the top six or the top eight. You know, when it comes to the bottom half of the table, interchangeable. In and out, you need someone, you need a Paul DeCanio, someone to get the troops up and going, you know, a man manager, someone to 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 a yeah. Harry Redknapp, someone someone to get the guys out of the basement. But the top six, man, you need time with those clubs because there's money, there's quality, you gotta have patience. You know, David Moyes, search, not getting no time. Well, we're not on the quick touch, man. We're in, we're in sports theory right now. We're in football theory. <laughs> Come on, classes, well, classes have already started, man. Where are your books at? <laughs> Great hey, shot. Newcastle forgot. won. Burnley won. Uh, Hosselu missed a penalty here. Absolutely gave me a gang of points um, <laughs> for PK Save Fantasy. Um, this kid, man, he's making noise. He's absolutely making noise. Josselu? No, Josselu. Oh, sorry. Hosselu. Hosselu. I think it's a. You drag that J. It's a. Sounds like you're dragging through the mud. Um, Either way, this one ends one (laughs) one. (laughs) (laughs) I know, dude. That was so awkward. Yeah, that was was horrible, (laughs) Hus. That was a fail. That was a fail. (laughs) Lands on his face. Uh, LaSalle's man making a name for himself. Young captain. I think he's 23 years old. If not, he's 24. 
been captaining uh, Newcastle United all year, scores the goal um, for Newcastle. He's got goals in him. He's a center back. He's a little bit aggressive. But, man, he might be a guy to watch next year to see if he can pop and maybe get into, like, a Leicester or West Ham or somewhere there. Full show. Uh, Stoke City 0, Watford 0, snooze fest. Seven yellow cards, though. Aggressive game, but a bit of a snooze fest. So, Kerry should have had a goal in this one. He was put in over the top. Of course, he just goes for the sma- – uh, the uh, was this big bro- – smash bro? What am I – what? Bash bro. Is it a- bash bro, thank you. He goes for the Jeez. bash bro finish. Um, I was thinking Super Smash Bros. for some reason. Um, he goes for the Bass Bro finish, and he just tries to slam it into the goalie. Um, Could have just picked the corner, son. Pick a corner, put it away. But nonetheless, 0-0 zero, zero game. And big both clubs miss a huge opportunity to take three points. Yeah, man. Three points, hard to come by this year. I mean, Watford um, hasn't won a game. Watford hasn't won a game since December 26th against Leicester. And, and they're still sitting in 11th place, dude. What a year. What an absolute crazy Premier League year. Um, all right, that wraps it up for a Premier League Match Day 25 review. Match Day 26 coming to you this weekend. But before that, we're going to wrap it up with the January transfer window. Lots of movement. Tom called it out. Brilliant move. I've been scratching my head all day. Best window of all out. time. Best like, window why, of all time. Why are there so many people moving? You got a bomber bang move. Like major, major deals going through. Of course, it's a World Cup year. They pretty much happen. They pretty much doubled what the record was, the 430 million uh, pounds this January. And that, that's not even counting the swap of Lexi Sanchez and Mkhitaryan. True. Right? Because if those two players get sold rather than swapped, we're looking at uh, almost 500 a $500 million, million, uh, 500 million <laughs> pound January. Bro, like, it was crazy. Man. It was all stars, though. Like, like stars were being sold. Coutinho, Van Dyke, Alexi Sanchez, Diego Costa. Um, Americ Laporte, uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, um, Bakambu, um, Mkhitaryan, Inigo Martinez, Lucas Moura, João Mario, Livy Giroud, Ross Buckley. Like the list goes on with the notable names. This to me has been easily the, the best, best January transfer window, winter window. Absolutely amazing with the amount of big names going to clubs, and it's going to make for a hell of an ending to the season. Dude, this was like summer. This was a summer transfer window. Um, that's the kind of movement we had, dude. It was absolutely amazing. Let's run through some of the major ones, though. Um, let's give respect to the probable 2017-18 uh, season champions. Just icing, icing the league, man. Companies in and out of the squad. Pep recognizes that Stones might need a little bit more time as well. Makes a brilliant signing. A guy I've wondered why big teams haven't signed him two, three seasons ago. Emmerich Laporte. Uh, Laporte. Um, from Atletico Bilbao, Athletic Bilbao, to Man City, almost sixty million pounds here. This is how you ice a championship. Yeah, they just and they hit his release clause, so they left the club powerless to to even say no to the negotiations. I mean, this was an absolute brilliant signing signing because it's rare that you can find a center back who's an A. How many A's are there out there? Agreed. Probably just one or two. Sergio Ramos and maybe like a Matt Hummels. Other than that, you have to look for young guys who are maybe B to B minus talent who have A potential. Laporte is one of those guys. Rafael Varane is one of those guys. Yep. So we know that defending has died down um, as the game has transitioned to favor their attacking players. So finding a quality defender is hard, and Pep and Manchester City pull off uh, a surely title-clinching transfer right here. And he still he still costs less than Virgil. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean that's Liverpool right there for you. Well, why wouldn't you go after him shout. instead? Great shout! Huh? I swear, Pep is in. He's playing FIFA, bro. Pep is playing FIFA, and he's like <laughs> seven seasons into career mode. Like, okay, dude. who gets nasty? All right, I'm gonna pick this dude up. Look at his team. Everyone's 22, 23. Tom, yeah, the worst part is this kid is twenty three years old, which means <laughs> in five years he's gonna have Stones and him partnering up. Assuming, you know, Stones pans out. He's going to have Sané, Sterling, and not to mention the guys he's going to pick Gabi up. Gabi Jesus, now and De Bruyne, it's, it's, Zinchenko. He's building a dynasty. This is how a dynasty is built. When, when uh, Fergie bled through that class of uh, 92, this, that's, a, you can see all the young talent coming through the A-class prime beef talent. This um, is what Chelsea could have been. Play a young 
Clay Young. Is- I agree, man. All right, let's not focus on that too much. City beating a dead horse. Uh, and uh, a signing I'm proud to say uh, was done here. Um, yeah. It's hard to say it, but I got to I gotta keep it real, man. Obama Yang to Arsenal. I truly saw this guy going to Liverpool, especially because Liverpool needed that nine spot, you know, up until recently. But what a way to silence the critics. You sell Alexi Sanchez, your best player. You bring oh, in Obama Yang. Oh, Brilliant, my man. God. So happy with this. This has been by far the best transfer window Arsenal has had in the past 10 years. Literally, the past 10 years, man, to bring in Obama Yang, Mkhitaryan. I mean, just those two names alone. Um, star power, over. re-signing Mesut Ozil, which was huge, absolutely huge. Um, now we can, you know, just just be confident of the front three or four um, going forward. And this was absolutely amazing. This guy's going to bring swag to the team. You know, Pogba's got that kind of charisma. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, I think, has that kind of charisma too. He's taking Thierry on Ree's 14 jersey as well. So that's a heavy you know, number, bro. It's a heavy, a heavy jersey, jersey to wear. He award for like 10 years and he got shat on for it. So it was too much for him. <laughs> it's just too much. It way too much, man. Um, so I hope Obama Yang comes in um, and has an instant impact. It's going to be interesting to see how and where him and Lacazette play. And look, he, uh, an article came out earlier, uh, late last week saying he's officially the fastest uh, player in the world, dude. So to have, to have Ozil throwing those salad. balls over. Um, and then to have Lacazette as well, who's speedy and smart and skillful. So you oh, might have to wait. go to like a 3-5-2 or some kind of two-man system. You need a 2-4 four system. We're going to see if Wenger's about this tactical life. Yeah, let's wow. see it, man. Speaking of tactical life, he lost his massive plan B. Um, Olivier Giroud sold to Chelsea 18 million pounds. Really weird, Hus- uh, not Hus- Al. I think I saw a comment in there saying to see Giroud in a blue shirt. It was very awkward. That's what I thought when I saw uh, Lexi Sanchez wearing the United jersey. It just it seemed like that that picture you'd see in FIFA when you you know just like playing <laughs> career mode or whatever. It's like it just didn't look right. It's like wait, what is this real life right now? And Hus, just just it's funny you say that. Sanchez is my first pickup after you know that first window when I started with Man United season because he was out of contract. Tips for you guys: if you play FIFA 18, you're starting a career mode. Sanchez contract expires. Pick him up as well as Messi. Messi's contract expires. Pick him up. Cheap, free transfers. Well, if we're talking um, FIFA, then we're, we can talk about Arsenal having three left backs, two attacking mids, and two strikers. Your chemistry is horrible right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with chemistry, bro. No, that has no, absolutely no, no. nothing FIFA to do with chemistry. FIFA Ultimate, 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 Ultimate team. team. You wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, you nah, wouldn't, wouldn't get it. Tom. No, do I no, want it? But it. Very, interesting, very interesting thing uh, with Arsenal... Giroud and Mishi Bashwai. This was a three-team deal um, yeah. that is kind of rare, but it was all dependent upon each other, right? So Obama Yang moving to Arsenal left a void for Dortmund and in central forward. Chelsea obviously have been looking for forward, and that meant that with Obama Yang coming to Arsenal, there were too many strikers at Arsenal, which made the way for Giroud to move to Chelsea. And there, and then um, Bashwai, who had who hasn't really been getting too much time at Chelsea then goes on loan to Borussia Dortmund. So I think all three teams, I think it works out for all three teams, but it's crazy how these deals were all dependent upon each other. Yeah, this is an NBA-style trade, man. You see these in the NBA all the time. You boys, I read my mind 100%. Tom, Tom took the thing off my tongue. You took That's the gross. thing out of my brain. I don't know take anything <laughs> off your tongue. What thing was, what oh, thing yeah. was on your tongue? Yeah. So, what uh, thing was on your tongue? Hey, rate one, two, three. Who wins? Arsenal probably won. Who who's the team that probably gets better, uh, Dortmund or Chelsea, with their new striker? I think both, man. It's uh, ah, look, no Dortmund. Dortmund no. If you have to do Batman. Batman. one, two, three. You got Batman. Yeah. No, no, Dortmund loses only because of Bamiang. You, we don't know what's gonna happen with Bashrai, but I'm very happy he made that move. I think Arsenal wins because I think between uh, Giroud, Bashrai, and uh, and Aubameyang, Aubameyang's the best. So Arsenal wins. They get rid of a player who is a bit part player anyway. They don't lose a starter. Um, so I think it goes Arsenal, Chelsea, Dortmund. Yo, so you know how Chelsea just got smashed three 0 to Bournemouth? They captured a picture of Olivier Giroud smiling on the bench. It's like, yeah, I'm about to get some playing time. <laughs> <laughs> you brought that Arsenal jinx with him, man. I love Gross. it. Uh, Theo Walcott, 
to Everton. Obviously, that was uh, earlier in, in the window, but we figure we just mentioned that one. And Bashwai, we got into as well. A signing that, man, this could be the biggest oh. underground signing of the year. Lucas Moore at the Tottenham for a measly £25 million. Pounds. So nervous, bro. I'm so nervous about this signing. Especially on Tottenham, man. They play high pace. Um, they have attacking flair. They play a bit of Joga, you know, not as pretty as Man City or, or Liverpool at times, but they definitely have that in their game. Now they add speedy Lucas Moura, whose career has been hampered. I'm sure a lot of you guys heard the name, but you're not quite sure if he's about this life. Unfortunately, he went to PSG, a team that turned into Real Madrid, uh, a, Pari- a Parisian Galacticos. So he he didn't get much playing time. But this guy has got the pieces, man. He's he's going to be dangerous. Who sits? <clears throat> Uh, Son. Son. So, yeah, I don't like old. that dude, man. Son is like so good. Nah, yeah. Son's so, dude, it's just I more like di- it's just more dynamic, no. man. It's a it's a different no. option on, off no, the no. bench, man. Spurs don't really have an out and out winger type player, man. So it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a good X X factor for them when they need it. You know, you I'll keep tell you playing Son, but you, you bleed more in. I agree with you guys. Son is first man up, but then next is Deli Ali. Because if he you, should he, he if you're playing sat. against a team with slower fullbacks, now Spurs have the option of going with their speedy wingers. You can have Son on the left, Lucas on the right, and Harry Kane up top. And the rest or you will can even have Lamella and Lucas. You know what I mean? If you really want to change shape, depending on the game. Son, we know, yeah. goes through cold streaks. He obviously gets his 20 goals plus or whatever. Um, there's something about Pochettino and Delhi and Pochettino and youngsters. Delhi should have been sitting in November. Not sitting extended period of time, but should have been missing games. Who they're gonna, um, who they're gonna yeah, replace him with? Who they're gonna put in? That's the issue. They, Spurs they don't have that attacking depth. So I think they they, they did. This was a great signing. We'll see how it works out. But I'm nervous but, for this one because I but, love Lucas Mora and I hate Spurs. I don't know. I mean, Son. He's been again. He's been doing so well. He's tied for 12th in the league with goals with uh, Mares, <laughs> Hazard, and Gabriel Jesus. Tied for 12th. <laughs> hey, what kind, of stat, what kind of stat is that? Yeah, that's uh, crazy. That, oh, that's look who he's tied with, Hazard. Garbage. Jesus. Yeah, but uh, Hazard Garbage? shouldn't be there. Jesus has been hurt. He shouldn't be there. Yeah, but Son um, they didn't play every game starting out. It's not helping his case, us. Yes, it is. Twelve foot two. How many? How many goals does he have? Players. How many goals? Six. He has eight. So I'm, I'm saying right now. Oh, so I'm focus thinking, on that. Yeah, he's got eight thinking, goals. That's that's. It might yeah, be. That's, that's the better pitch. I'm thinking it might be Eric Dyer. Small. It might be Eric Dyer. Yeah, Eric in certain Dyer, games it will be. They're gonna figure some way out to keep them. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be Dembele yeah. roaming alone by himself. If they're playing a weaker team, of course, you don't need don't Guy and Dembele in there. Lamella. La and then uh, I think this is definitely the end of uh, Sissoko. No, he Sissisco? came on the other day, dude. Sissoko. Sissoko? Yeah, Sissoko. <laughs> yeah. Disco? Be... <laughs> He's still going to be a bench bum, but... Disco? Um, he'll get his time, man. <laughs> Aaron so Lennon. Go with the <laughs> I, feel, I feel like Tiggy and I are the adults. So we're listening to like the two children talk. Thanks, Tom. Some... Bro, oh, with your, with your comments about he's tied for 12th, I think you're the kid, bro. <laughs> Aaron <laughs> Lennon leaves Everton. Uh, club he was at for a very long, long time. Joins Burnley. Um, good for him, man. I hope he gets more burn at Burnley. Obviously went through personal issues um, for a few years in his career, suffering from depression and other uh, issues. So very happy for him back in football. Burnley will certainly use a guy like him. Um, very wisely this year, so I, I feel like he get um, he got replaced. Uh, he got replaced with Walcott uh, going to Everton. I thought yeah. at one point they were almost like neck and neck. I feel like they were the same type of player. They the young, speedy winger type. Uh, just it's funny how they they, they switch uh, upgrade later on in the careers. Yeah, and they ne- mm-hmm. neither one of them really lived up to that hype that they had. You know, so it's it's kind of interesting. Obviously, Theo's done a lot better, but even still, Theo hasn't lived up to the potential. Um, for but sure. good for them, man. Good for them. Mangala, Everton, uh, joins Everton from Man City on loan. Good Obviously deal. freeing up room for Laporte. Uh, yeah, brilliant deal for Mangala. Gets to play. And uh, Man City as well. Gets to see a guy develop at Everton. You know, a solid club. Playing in the Premier League. Maybe next season he comes on as a better player. Great business. Storage. Nope. West Brom. Loan. From Liverpool, good for Sturridge. Like Tom pointed out, no need to dig into this one too much. World Cup here, Sturridge obviously looking for playing time. Mr. Mr. Sitter, 
um, in his debut game. Uh, not even a sitter, open net kind of tough angle, but Jitter put that one away. Hopefully he'll improve as he gets more and more burn at uh, West Brom. I feel like I'm just running through all these by myself, guys. Yeah, I mean, just run through them, guys. Yeah, run through oh. Slimani, you know, going to Newcastle on loan. Very disappointing. Mitrovic making the switch. He gets loaned down to Fulham, um, who's in the lower league. So, I mean, Slimani disappointing um, because he arrives um, a couple of years ago, uh, maybe last year, was it? Um, with like 27.5 million fee at Leicester City. Now he gets sent out on loan. So, very disappointing for him. Um, so some, most of these moves, man, I think they were, they, they were low-key moves. These are more like the not as high-profile moves. But except, they're moves that show you that the quality of the EPL, the money within the EPL. Except this move. Jao Mario, a guy who was linked to all kinds of clubs this past summer, plays for Inter, goes to West Ham on a loan deal that uh, could potentially term permanent. That's... That's insane, dude. West Ham pulled Jao Mario. How? But he's been having a Premier rough baby. season with Inter. Yeah, but you're right, Al. It's, it's the Prem. It's the Prem. Uh, like we were saying money. earlier, Andre Ayu joins his brother Jordan Ayu at Swansea. Looks like Swansea won't be relegated now with the Ayu Bash Bros. This is what I'm talking and about. And Wilfred Bonnie. Before, no, forget about Bonnie. And, and, yeah. and Moss, Bonnie, get, get, Alfie Moss and baby. Yeah, get rid of, hey. get rid of. Yeah, get rid of uh, Bonnie. I don't care about him. But are you going to Swansea? I was saying that Swansea should buy Jordan before they sold uh, Andre to um, West Ham. Now I can finally see it. Hopefully I was correct that these two brothers, maybe they have some sort of like internal familyhood, you know, like sharing the same brain type of thing. I want to see these guys in action. Chemistry through the roof, hopefully. Andy King loaned out to Swansea uh, from Leicester City hoping to get himself some more burn. A, a transfer, Tom called, and I was, you know, a bit hopeful about Delafeu going, uh, well, last season he was recalled back from his loan at AC Milan to Barcelona. Yeah, they, didn't they just forced it. Him. Yeah, they, fo- they, they derailed this poor kid's career. He was doing work at AC, wanted to stay right. at AC, um, and now he's at Watford. And Watford Horrible. need him, man. They could definitely use him. He whipped in a couple of good balls on the past game they had against Stoke. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he does going forward. Yeah, and a guy who uh, who should have left Leicester a long time ago, but has been you know a journeyman for them, a great servant. Ujoa uh, joins Brighton. I think that's a better level for him. He'll get more playing time as well. Uh, get to compete week in week out. So very happy for. Uh, and that's Ujoa. that's a that's a, a second striker that Leicester let go this this January. So obviously Ian Nacho really did start impressing during the tournament games. Uh, so he's going to get more playing time. So it looks like maybe, it, it, maybe the boy Sandro Ramirez. Hey, that is Hustle's boy. Is the bet still yeah, on? They didn't let him go. No, no, no. I'm talking about Lester. What? what you say? Oh, you're right, right. You're right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking. Of <laughs> yeah, because right. Lester had Ujoa and then uh, Salmani leave. And now it's, it's really just Vardy, Ogazaki, and Ian Nacho. And there was talk about <clears throat> Ian Nacho really performing during cup games. And look, Les is walking the walk with this guy. And they brought him in. Hopefully, he takes his good performances to the league and really propel Lester, maybe to sixth place, depending on how well Arsenal bounce back. Because they're both down. I don't know. Settle down. Why? Why settle I down? Because, because Arsenal has 42 points and Leicester City has 34. So, uh, eight points? It's eight points. It's an illegal that's, that's a violation right now. Look, yeah, it's, man. it's even tougher we- because. Mares um, is threatening to boycott, might not play the rest of the season. All that stuff, basically pulling a Piat. Well, pulling moves like a Piat. Feel very strong about this one. Won't get into it too hard. About, for, about Mares, though, real quick, um, since he got brought up, he allegedly will be fined 200,000 pounds for missing training. So he's in violation of his contract. We'll see how that situation goes. But that's just a quick update. Yeah, he's on strike. Yeah. He's on strike. I don't blame him, man. Leicester priced him out of the market twice, um, essentially, in both windows. So we'll see how it plays out. Ozil signs a contract extension, like we mentioned earlier. Massive, massive news uh, for Arsenal and the Gooners. Even Alex bigger Sons. news. Alex Sons <laughs> training with Arsenal? Arr? Yeah. I don't mind, bro. I don't mind. He, that's a guy who should have never left. He went to Barcelona too early. You never yeah. got time. He followed his best career. Friend. Went to shit. 
He followed his so, best friend Fabregas. Yeah, they man, they all all and where did they end up? Back in the EPL. So, <laughs> so <laughs> as in a song was nice, man. The the friggin all all low low sock low low, low short short team oh, high shorts rather high shorts. Man, yeah, you guy, wanted shorts nice. to be he, low. He was don't number you? six. You wanted shorts <laughs> on the ground, don't you, us? Talking about things on your tongue. Hey, he was not number six, four, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys that wraps no, it up no, no, i was, I was gonna i was gonna say because you uh, never taught that but, tongue comment no alex song they say that he's looking for a new club but don't put it past arsenal because they did sign flamini in 2013 when he was out of contract so maybe son comes back to arsenal you never know we, we need a defensive midfielder oh no you got except, elmany mohammed elmany i like him Dude, oh, except, ex- except fl- actually fl- before we close it up real quick who won out of out of who who won out of everyone for the transfer? Manchester United, Arsenal, Manchester United. They, they pip they pip Man City to a guy that could bring them to the next level at, at at a faster rate. And Alexis Sanchez not the going there, right? And we and we gone for free. Yeah, you get to play like Alexis Sanchez for nothing. I mean, for if you're going to equate it to the Mkhitaryan transfer, which was around thirty million pounds, so we paid thirty million pounds for Alexis Sanchez. That's bargain. I would agree with you, Al, if Arsenal did not sign Obama Yang and Mkhitaryan. Got guys over the hill and Arsenal are on the way down. So, I mean, get you nowhere. No, right, that's all in motion. That's all in motion. Uh, how about check the okay, table think, last three years? You know? okay. I'm, going, I'm going with Everton. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with Everton. Yeah, they did really well. <laughs> I was just messing uh, They got Theo Walcott. They got Mangala. They got rid of Aaron Lennon because of. I mean, look, he could be a great guy, but you never know what's going through his head because he had that problems. So he might have brought Everton down in the locker room. So they got rid of that. Why are you and, blaming uh, him for that, dude? That's... No, no, you don't know. I'm saying you don't know what's going on with that. Dude, so, I, say, I mean, Everton did well this January. I say Giroud and Bashoi won the most. Guys yeah, who individual individual their... winners. Yeah, yeah. who who yeah, lost? Wearing... Mares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Well, actually, took that out. Get Leicester. All right, my phone's going to die at any moment. <laughs> cool. All right, let's wrap this one up. Thanks for listening, guys. It's been real. It's been awesome. Um, catch us this weekend. Quick turnaround. We've got match day 26 EPL action coming at you live. Well, not live. Kind of live. Um, thank you for listening. Appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.